what's up guys hope you're all having an amazing day welcome back to the channel it's been a minute um took a little break to focus on some work uh but here we are with yet another video so i hope you guys enjoy this and um if you are new to the channel my name is edmund um i'm a photographer and i try to share my journey of photography and videography here with you guys on YouTube. So I almost said Facebook. <laughs> ah, here on YouTube. So um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for future videos. I have a lot of videos too on the channel. If you like to check out and give it a watch, I will appreciate that. Um, but here today, we're going to be talking about a new camera that I have acquired and this camera I've been wanting I've been looking at it for a while um, it's been a minute but here we are about to make a video about this camera so let's get let's get into it now if you guys remember or if you watch on the channel I have a Nikon F3 and I've made a video about it and it's one of my absolute favorite cameras that I own. And ever since I've had it, it's kind of been my main camera whenever I want to really like go out and shoot any 35 film. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of failed me a little bit because I do like shooting flash sometimes. And if you know the Nikon F3, or uh, if you're familiar with it, you know that it doesn't have a hot shoe. It doesn't even have a cold shoe. So if you want to put any flash on it, you have to have the adapter to put on the camera, on the left side of the camera, to be able to mount anything on, on the Nikon F3. So I went on eBay and bought one of those um, adapters to put on it to be able to use flash with it. And when the adapter arrived, it wasn't working. It wasn't, I have, I have about four or five flash and none of them was working with it. And it was very, very frustrating. Um, and so I reached out to the guy I bought the adapter from and told him that the adapter he sent me wasn't working. And this kind gentleman uh, agreed to send me, send me another um, adapter to to use or to try but that arrived and it wasn't working either so that was two adapters that wasn't working with my Nikon F3 and so I needed to make sure that it's I needed to find out what the fault was was it the adapters that wasn't working or was it the camera that it wasn't working so I took the camera and the adapter to a local camera store and I tried the adapters that I bought on the Nikon F3s and they were working. Um, and so I just realized maybe, you know, my Nikon F3 is faulty and I wouldn't be able to ever use flash with it. Of course, unless I want to um, use the sync cable, that works perfectly well. Um, but if I want to mount directly any flash on it, it doesn't work. And I didn't want to use the sync cable because to use the sync cable, you have to have a flash that can take a sync cord. If you don't have one, there are adapters that you can buy to put on your flash, to, to put on your camera, to be able to connect a sync cable. And having an adapter on the Nikon F3 and then putting another adapter on top of it and then your flash, the camera is just going to look ridiculous. And I'm kind of, uh, I like to keep my cameras very, you know, simple and, and, and clean and neat and not too many things, you know, dangling on it and happening at the same time. So they had this old flash that has the Nikon F3 adapter already on it. And that one has three pins that connects to the three pins on the camera. And that did work but the two pins adapter that I had never worked with the camera. So it got me thinking maybe there is three pins adapter out there 
that will work with my camera that I'm not able to find. And I still cannot find any on eBay or any of the camera stores online or even here uh, at, uh, local. So if any of you guys know any adapter that has the three pins that will work on the Nikon F3, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, you can DM me the link on Instagram. I will really appreciate it. Now, why am I telling you this story? It is because the Nikon F3 for a while, like I said, I thought it was going to be my main camera. And if that is failing on me, I wanted to have a camera at least that I can rely on. I do have a Canon FTB that works perfectly well. The, the, the inbuilt light meter works that my friends Dave gifted to me, but it doesn't work well with most of the flash that I have. And so sometimes I have to take a shot and miss a, quite a few frames before I can get it to line up well. Um, and so I just wanted to have one camera that I can rely on that I know anytime I pick it up, um, I don't have to worry about anything. Now, there is so many cameras out there, but there has been a particular camera that I have been looking at for a very long time. Actually, I was looking at the older models for a while, and that is the Leica R system. The Leica R system is, I will say, the cheapest um, Leica camera out there to get into the Leica system. Um, now, the, the lenses are not that cheap, but the bodies are very, very cheap uh, compared to, you know, the M and the SL, uh, SL um, cameras that they have out there. I mean, there are other, you know, Leica cameras out there that might be cheaper, but based on what I am looking for, the R system was the cheapest. Now, I've, I watched so many videos. I have, you know, watched videos on the um the the um the r r3 r4 r5 um i watch videos on the r6 the r6 II, and then the r7 um most based on the videos and the research that i did a lot of people really really love the uh the r r6 actually because it's all mechanical and a lot of people also like the R6 II, which is the most expensive of the R line um, because that is mechanical and it has up to 2000 uh, shutter speed. And so that is mostly what people prefer. Now, I wasn't able to spend that much on a new camera. So I went on eBay looking around and I found a very, very nice looking mint R7 and Luckily, it was listed by a local camera store, so I immediately gave them a call, told them I was interested in, um, already started talking the price and seeing if they would bring it down for me. Um, luckily, they always treat me right, and so I went down there and bought this very mint um, Leica R7 that looks like it's never been touched it's it's just amazing it looks so good looks so clean and i just couldn't pass the deal and i just couldn't pass how good this camera looks so here we are after my nikon f3 kind of failing on me uh, i mean it still works and it's still great but it pushed me to finally get a camera that I've been looking at, a camera that I've been wanting for a very, very long time. This is the Leica R7. Now, the last time I had a Leica was back in 2021, and I had a Leica M4P that I really liked, but unfortunately, I had to let it go because it, to me, cameras are supposed to be the tools we use and are supposed to be, you know, Sometimes the, the tools that inspire us to pick it up and go out and shoot. If a camera does not motivate me to take it out and shoot, um, to me, there is no point keeping it. And I, I feel I felt like that was what was happening with the M4P. And so I let it go and I ended up getting 
Um, I ended up getting a Konica Hexar that I also ended up selling. Fast forward, we are back to having a Leica again, and I'm really, really excited about it. The boys have Leicas, and whenever they go out and they are shooting their Leicas, they don't want to call me uh, because they are the cool kids. Well, now I'm part of the cool kids now. We are the Leica gang, and um, anytime that <clears throat> anytime that we go out to shoot, everyone can have a Leica with them. They are shooting the M bodies, but I'm shooting the R body, and yes, still, um, it's really, really amazing. So today, I just wanted to do an overview um, of the camera, and I'm going to be taking it out with my friend Dave, and we're going to be going out and, and shooting this camera. And of course, I'm going to be sharing the results with you guys. And so look forward for that video. But when I bought the camera, I did not have any more money to buy a lens. Uh, luckily, again, um, our local camera store, Midwest, um, I have rented a few, you know, camera gear from them. And so they were kind enough to let me rent a Simulox it's just, it, it sounds so fancy just saying Similux because I never thought I would say that ever on this channel. But um, I ended up renting this Similux 1.4, uh, 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. And boy, I, this, uh, it looks so good. Very, 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 very good. And if you know, this lens is very, very expensive. It's above 2K. And so I just couldn't pass having the opportunity to shoot this camera. So here we are with the setup. Very beautiful 50 millimeter lens, 1.4 and the Leica R7. Now, like I said, this camera looks very, very mint. Um, it looks like it's never been shot before. So really great camera. Now, like I said, this is an overview. So I'm just gonna go um, a little, kind of tell you the, the, the functions on here and what it does. I'm not really good at reviewing, reviewing cameras, but I'm just gonna try to tell you all the things that have on, uh, on the, all the things that this camera has and then um, share that with you. So if you look here to the front, um, that is the logo, that is the R7 Leica, has the shutter speed that goes from four seconds, actually bulb all the way to 2000. It has an on and off button here which is one thing that I like about the R7 because I think the older ones do not have the on and off button. And so um, I think to, to have the meter off, um, you have to just leave the camera or push the, uh, the rewind, the film advanced lever to turn off the, the light meter. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know much about it than I do. But it goes from bulb to two thousandths of a second. Um, the flash sync speed on this camera is 100, which is great because um, a few cameras that I've shot has slower shutter speed with flash. And so 100 is really great. And then you have four seconds, two seconds, uh, you have a half a second, and then, um, 8th, 15, 30, all the way to 2000. Now, if you look here in this little window, that tells you what settings you're shooting at. Now it's set to aperture priority. Um, there is two versions of aperture priority. There is aperture priority with um, average light meter reading, and then there is aperture priority with um, the spot, kind of like uh, uh, the center weighted uh, reading. And then there is the manual. So there is manual aperture priority with this uh, center weighted meter reading and then um, average reading. And then there is P which is program. 
Um, I don't think I will ever use that, but it's there if you need it. Uh, there is timer and then that's it. So for the most part, I think I'm going to be shooting between uh, manual and then aperture priority center weighted and the average. It's really nice to have um, those two options just in case you want to be very critical on your um, light metering. So on the other side, you have your ISO switch here. So when you push this button, it will be able, you will be able to change the ISO on the camera. Um, this camera also has the DX code reading. And so if you don't want to manually change your, your ISO, you can also put it to DX code and whatever film you put in there, it will be able to read it and help you with the metering. Now, if you do bulk load, or if you're shooting a film that has been bulk loaded, um, unfortunately, you won't be able to use that because there might not be a DS code on it, or even if there is, it might be the wrong um, ISO connected to it. So it's nice to have both options, which manually you can set it, and then you can also put it to DS coding. It also has um, the, um, exposure compensation in the front here. So all you have to do is push this button and then pull, uh, turn this dial to change your exposure compensation, which is also really, really great. Um, the ISO on this camera goes from uh, one, oh wait, is it 100? No, it goes from 26, actually ISO six. It goes from ISO six all the way to, I think, 3200. Um, oh no, it goes all the way to 12,800. Man, that is awesome. I don't think I'll ever use that, but never say never. So it goes all the way from ISO 6 to 12,800, which is great. And then of course, the DS code. So that's it on this side. This is the rewind knob. Uh, the ISO button to, to change the ISO, exposure compensation. This is your flash sync port. And then here in the back, you have the, uh, this is the um, uh, diopter for people that wear glasses. Um, mostly I don't need it. Um, I'm getting there. These days, my eyes, anything close to my eye, I'm finding it very hard to see. So getting to the point where I might be needing that, but I haven't used it yet and I haven't used it on any of my cameras yet, but it's there if you need it. And then this button here is to close the viewfinder for when you're doing long exposure. So it's nice to have that. I don't think again, I will ever use that or need that because if I'm going to be shooting anything that I need a tripod, mostly I'm shooting um, large format or four by five, um, uh, medium format of large format. So I wouldn't need this for any 35, uh, photos that I would take. But again, it's nice to have, you never know when you will need it. So that's it. Um, on the top, your, um, film counter is up here, right next to the advanced lever. And one thing that I really like, I have film in here, so I wouldn't be able to like advance it but one thing that i really like is how short it is to advance and initially the shutter sound was a little weird it sounded a little weird to me but i've come to really like it and i think it was also because i didn't have any lens on it so it was you know sounding weird but since i've had the lens on it um i kind of have like the the shutter of this camera so that's it. Um, I'm going to be giving this lens back to Midwest tomorrow. Um, but I have ordered um, a lens from KEH. I ordered the 50 millimeter Sumicron F2, um, the, um, the version three, um, the one that was made in Canada. So I'm excited to receive that. I'm excited to try that as well. And of course, again, Whatever photos I take with this setup, I'm going to be sharing with you. Stay tuned uh, for the videos that is coming up. 
and that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it um i don't know have you been looking at the leica r7 or the r system it's a really great camera um i actually forgot to mention how heavy it is uh it feels great it just it's solid and obviously it's a leica so it's built well and sometimes when you've not had a camera in your hand um you wouldn't actually know how it feels and how great it's built but this is a really really well built camera and every dial every button on here feels so great to push to touch to feel oh i forgot to mention over here too there is the timer you can tell I'm all over the place. I'm not great at reviewing reviewing cameras, but it has a self timer on here if you need it. And then this is the depth of field um, preview uh, right here. Actually, it's this button right here. Um, there is this here to be able to like put a cable or shutter cable or something there, but I don't know what that is for. Um, I remember my friend Dave and I looked at it, but I don't remember if I do. Remember when I'm editing this video, I'll put it on on the screen what this does. Um, and then here is the button to like take your lens off. So yeah, that's it. This lens has an inbuilt lens hood, which is great. And um, yeah, that's it for the video. Like, subscribe, stay tuned for when I take it out on the field to test it out. Thanks for watching. Follow me on my Instagram, Edmund K. Boateng, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.